So we just finished looking at uh, the first question in this worksheet here on slopes and lines. And we looked at drawing four different lines with slopes of one half. And you saw what those looked like. All four lines, when you looked at them, they were all parallel to each other. They all had a slope of one half. They rose one and they ran two. They had a rise over run of one over two. Uh, so now if you look a little further down the page, you see question two asks you to fill in a table of values for the equation y equals one half x plus three and to graph that line. So to fill in a table of values, uh, sometimes the first step, which is actually the easiest one, is one that people get a little bit confused about because it's so wide open. You can do anything. It'll be fine. You've got to fill in the x's here. You could say to yourself, uh, all right, uh, I don't know, any numbers I want, I could put in here. Uh, I could make this uh, minus 4 if I want to put a minus 4 in there just because I love minus 4. It's my favorite number. Uh, I've always told you it's a good idea to put a 0 in there because that'll make your life easier if you have a 0. Uh, and you'll start to see why as we go through this. Uh, I'm going to put another uh, number in here. 2. Good old 2. Everybody loves 2. It's a great number. It's prime. It's even. Fantastic. And then uh, why not uh, positive 4? Negative 4 is in there. I don't want positive 4 to get jealous. Let me use that at one as well. And in order to fill in a table of values, what you have to do is you have to keep thinking to yourself, let me take that equation that I've got, right, this equation here of y equals one half x plus three, and you write it out again. Let me just copy it here. Except instead of putting the x in there, I'm gonna erase that x. And in its place, inside brackets, I'm going to put each number that I've taken from the table of values. All right, so it's y equals one half times whatever I'm going to put in there plus three, because that whatever I'm going to put in there is from the x table, right? These are all the x values. I'm going to put them one by one in there. So the first one I put in is uh, minus four, we said. So I put in minus four in this equation right there. And if I do 1 half times minus 4 plus 3, 1 half times minus 4 will give me minus 2. Do minus 2 plus 3, I will get 1. So that means that in this table here, I can put uh, 1. Because whenever I plug in minus 4 into this equation, I get uh, 1. Now, let me instead try plugging in the next number in my table for x, right? I've got 0 here, so let me plug in 0. And like I said, it's great to use 0. It makes your life a little easier because what's 1 half times 0? I mean, multiplying fractions can sometimes throw people a little bit for a loop, but 1 half times 0, anything times 0 is just 0. So then you have 0 plus 3 would give you 3. That means that when x is 0, y is 3. So I can put in 3 here as my y value. And I'm filling in the table bit by bit. If instead of having a 0 here, I were to take my next x and put that in this spot, let me put in the 2. Let me put 2 in there. I've got 2 in this spot, and I say, what's 1 half times 2? 1 over 2 times 2 over 1. That's 1 times 2 on the top is 2. 2 times 1 on the bottom is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. 1 half times 2 makes sense that it's 1, and I do 1 plus 3 to get my y value here, which will be 4. And lastly, if I plug 4 in there instead of 2, if I erase my 2 here, and I were to replace this x in this equation with 4, then when I put that in, I do 1 half times 4, half of 4 is 2, I add 3 onto that, and I get 5, which means my y here should be 5. So that's me filling in the table of values. And the whole reason why I want to fill in the table of values here is, you may remember before, I've talked about how you could have the rule that I'm saying, okay, this rule is saying everybody in class whose name starts with A. And if I want to know what that actually means, then I would list all the names of people whose names start with A, right? This is the rule of everyone in class whose name starts with the letter A. That's what that is up here. Oops, I don't know where it went. There, it's back. And then if I were to actually get those names here, all the people in my class whose names start with A, that's my table of values right there.
And then once I have that table of values, that list of names, then I can have the picture of those five people. Uh, and that's when the graph comes in. So here, now that I've got my, uh, my table of values, that's the list of names, I can ask those five people to show up in the picture. Be like, all right, uh, let's start with uh, you here. Uh, minus four and one, I want you to stand in the picture over here. That's at minus four and one right there. Uh, that's your spot in the picture. And then I've got zero and three. Uh, you're going to go right there. Oops, I put minus four and one in the wrong spot. Sorry about that, guys. There he goes. Minus four and one. That's where you should have been standing. My fault. Sorry, I was taking the picture. I was distracted. Uh, so here I have zero and three. That means uh, it's my buddy Axel here is standing there in the picture. Zero and three. And then two and four is going to be in the picture right over here. And four and five, well, then you would be up there. Now you see all these guys are lined up. If I really want to complete the picture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line and draw it through all those guys. And I'm not going to stop right at the last guy. I'm going to keep going right until the edge of the picture. So that is my picture of what this equation looks like. This is a list of the names of the guys in this equation, right? And this is a picture of all those guys together. So that was question two. Now, what I want you to notice, if you're on your sheet there, if you're comparing question two and question one, question two says, notice how this line is similar to the ones on the graph above. If you look at this line here, and then you look higher up on your page, you'll notice that this line is parallel to all four lines that you had on your graph up there. The reason why they're parallel is because in this equation, right, y equals one half x plus three, that one half is the slope. So if I've got a slope of one half in this line now, it makes sense that it would be tilted the same way as those four lines up above on your page.